Halloween 5, The Revenge of Michael Myers, a very polarising entry in the franchise among the fans. This one continues exactly where the previous film left off, with Michael escaping through this very convenient tunnel to get away from the sheriffs and deputies as they throw loads of dynamite down on him, or attempt to. And then he finds himself in this convenient stream that floats him even further away from danger. You've just got to go along with it, I suppose. Although, I swear to God, if you watch the end of Halloween 4... There's no stream or river beyond that graveyard. You can see into the distance. There's nothing like that. But you just have to go with it. So then he ends up at this weird hermit's shack with this boring guy with a sailor cap. I say boring because what they originally were going to do with this sounds a lot better. There was supposed to be this witch doctor guy with a bone necklace and what would have been a really interesting set design. And he would have done loads of voodoo and stuff. And I don't know why they changed from that to what we get. Because what we end up with is so much more boring. I mean... Even the way Myers kills this guy, it's so badly edited, you can't see what's going on. I'm guessing because they changed what they were going to do quite late in the production, they didn't have time to film a proper death for the Hermit, but it just all adds up to a really bad opening on the whole with lots of plot conveniences and a, a mishmash of ideas, and they weren't sure what they were going to do. Once we get to Haddonfield, it doesn't get a lot better. This new writer-director, Dominique athenin Gerard. He treats the returning characters in this movie really shabbily. Jamie Lloyd, in Halloween 4, I mean, she was one of the best child leads of all time in that film for me. But in this film, not only is the ending from number 4 retcon so that there's no lingering issues with her, she doesn't develop any psychopathic tendencies or anything like that, but also she's now mute, which is really boring. She's mute for half of this film. And it, what's the point of that? It's just tedious watching her trying to speak. She's also developed a psychic link with Myers. If that's supposed to be interesting, it's not. It's just, again, boring. Um, I mean, I'm not saying that she should have become the killer of Halloween 5, but at least do something different from this, because, it, I mean, Jamie Lloyd the second time around for me, it just doesn't work. It's Watching the same nine-year-old girl th go through exactly the same routine with Myers is just too samey. I mean, if she'd have been 12 or 13 this second time around, that could have provided a new dynamic. She might have been able to fight back a little bit, but as it is, no. Dr. Loomis, I've seen Donald Pleasance play this character five times. This is by far the worst of those showings. They've made the character really grumpy and mean-spirited. He shouts at kids. He uses questionable tactics to bring Myers out into the open. I get that they were trying to take the character down a new avenue, take him further towards what somebody could become if they were continually frustrated in their attempts to put a stop to a really mad killer but it just doesn't work for me Loomis is just irritating as hell in Halloween 5 just easily easily the, the only time in the series I don't like this character and that's just no good Sheriff Meeker in Halloween 4 he was a really really good character in this one he's just where's his uh, anger at the fact that Myers is back the guy who killed his daughter Loomis has to G him up at the start of the film and just you know, talk him into actually showing some emotion at what's going on, but he just, it's like he's forgotten about. You hardly see him. He's certainly in this film less than the previous one. And then at the end, does he die or does he not? The film doesn't seem to care. Then there's this other part where he gets tricked away from the Myers house before the finale way too easily. So on the whole, Jamie Lloyd, Loomis, Mika, they're just, they're not treated very well at all in the writing of this movie. The, cat, the new characters, the ones that come in, they're a bit better. I did like the character of Samantha. I did like the character of Mikey. He's really funny. I wished he'd have lasted longer in the film. And I know Tina gets a bad rap among some Halloween fans, but I, I actually quite liked her. Um, she's got a lot going on. You can tell that she's not sure that her boyfriend, whether that's going to be a long lasting thing. She's having doubts there. You can tell. Also, she's a bit uncomfortable having to be Jamie's kind of stand in older sister for, for this particular Halloween night. So She's got a lot going on up top, and I, I think her personality is okay. I mean, some people find her annoying, but that whole thing with the bat ba da bat ba da I, I, I've actually learned to actually find that funny. I think, I think it's just because I've seen the movie so many times now that it's just become funny. But I, I can get why some people don't like her fine, but it's not like she even makes it to the end. She dies half an hour from the, from the climax, so... Myers House, I've got to talk about that. It looks nothing like the proper Myers House. I mean, I think the director said something along the lines of he needed it to look that way so he could have this massive big laundry chute. But if that's the case, why not just use another house? Why did you have to use the Myers House? It makes no difference to the end of this film, the fact that you're in the Myers House. 
you know, the end of Halloween 1 was amazing. What house would, would, did that take place in? It sure as hell wasn't the, the Myers house or the Strode house, but it was still great. So why does the end of this one have to take place in the Myers house? I don't know. And the ending with Myers getting lured into the steel trap thing, it's just very anticlimactic to me. Nowhere near as good as the previous endings from 1, 2, 3 and 4. Uh, then you've got this secondary ending at this police station. We don't even see what's going on. We just get this weird glimpse of the man in black standing in the door frame shooting. That could have been a really good battle if the man in black and Myers had worked together against all these police officers. A big, big battle to enjoy at the end. Mika could have had his big moment to try and have a showdown with Myers, but no, we don't get any of that. They, they didn't have the budget or the, or the energy. I don't know, but clearly it was just lacking, wasn't it? So what did I enjoy about the film? I think the barn sequence is probably the one outstanding segment. There was an interesting set design there with all the straw and the cross beams. There was a good atmosphere, a good couple of kills. Would have been nice to have spent a few scenes actually inside the rave, but is what it is. You'll notice I didn't include Rachel earlier on my list of returning characters who weren't treated very well. That's because I would say as sad as it is to see Rachel depart in this film, it's it's probably the only bold choice the film makes. Plus it's a good kill, Maya's stalking her over what seems like a good five or six minutes of moving from room to room. I enjoyed that kill actually. There's the scene as well with uh, Jamie fleeing down into the boiler room. That's not bad, I suppose, but you're dealing in scraps really. It's basically the barn segment, one or two other bits, any scene with Samantha and Mikey in. And, but you're not talking even half an hour of runtime when you mix all that together, I think. On the whole, it's just a very bland, by-the-numbers Halloween movie. You can tell that they just wanted to churn another one out at this stage. It was definitely a mandate to don't do anything to Myers at the end of the film, set up a potential Halloween 6 just so they can keep making them, and it's just it's not very impressive. It's, it's just one of the lower entries for me. I wouldn't recommend it unless you were absolutely intent on doing the entire Halloween run from start to finish. If this was a slasher film that didn't have the Halloween name on it, I probably only would have watched it once and then very quickly forgotten about it afterwards. It's just subpar, unfortunately, in my opinion. So let's get to the Bag of Terror and find out what sort of score we've got. One, two bloody axes, that's all I'm afraid. Two out of five, that puts it by far in the spot of the worst Halloween film I've reviewed so far in this series. The, the, the next one up is Halloween 3 Season of the Witch, which scored three and a half, but there's quite a, quite a gap there. So yeah, worst one out of the first five movies by a mile. Right, that concludes my review for today. There's no pin for the Horror Locations board today because we've already done Haddonfield. I'll be back soon to do Halloween, The Curse of Michael Myers. Subscribe if you haven't already and check out my Halloween playlist for other reviews in the series and some various rankings of characters and kills. But until next time, cheerio, bye-bye.